Like most video editing applications, HitFilm comes with their own default keyboard shortcuts. But the great thing about this software is you can make it your own and customize it to however you would like it to operate. Now over the last 15 to 20 years of being an editor, I've gone through one keyboard shortcut after another, and I've been slowly but surely customizing them down to my absolute favorites. The keyboard shortcuts I'm about to show you are gonna guarantee efficiency so that you can be your most creative with the limited time you have available in your schedule to be an editor. So with that, let's dive in. Okay, so here we are back in our interface. This is the same workspace that we created in the last tutorial. Yours should look very similar, if not identical. Now, the purpose of this tutorial is to go in and customize the keyboard shortcuts to what will allow us to be the most efficient and ultimately the most creative. So to do that, we're gonna go up to File and we're gonna go to Options. Okay, and down here, is our shortcuts. If it doesn't automatically go to it, please just click on shortcuts. And we're gonna change those to the keyboard shortcuts that I've adopted over the last 15 years of professional video editing experience. Okay, so first under the general tab, I just go through. So undo and redo, we have control Z, control Y. I wanna change control Y to control shift Z. So now instead of it being control Y, it's gonna be control shift Z. Okay, for delete, it makes sense that delete is actually the delete key, but we're gonna change that to the Z key. And it'll become more clear as to why we're doing that once we start editing. And everything else is pretty good. Let's go ahead and just scroll through a little bit more just to make sure that we're not missing anything and everything is looking good. So that takes care of our general keyboard shortcuts. Now we're in the common timeline keyboard shortcuts. So for the endpoint and outpoint, it defaults to I and O, which is the same for what most editors do. I'm gonna change it to D for the endpoint and F for the outpoint. And for the set in and out points to content, we're gonna change that from P to T. For previous frame, we're gonna change that to one. And for next frame, we're gonna change that to two. For previous edit point, we're gonna change that to A. And for next edit point, we're gonna change that to S. And it says right here, warning, the S shortcut is already assigned to the rate stretch tool command. So what we'll do is like once we click off, it's not gonna let us change that. So we need to go to the rate stretch tool. We can search for it up here. There it is. So we're gonna change it from S to control shift S. And we're gonna do the same thing right down here, control shift S. It's the same tool, just at different times. So we've got that taken care of. We're gonna go ahead and delete the search criteria, and we're gonna go back down to next edit point, and now we should be allowed to change it to S. And everything seems to work just fine. For increase timeline scale, we're gonna change that to Shift F. And for decrease timeline scale, we're gonna change that to Shift G. Okay, the next one we're gonna change is slice selected objects and layers. We're gonna change that from Control Shift D to H. Oh, once again, we can't do it because it's already assigned to the hand tool. So what we're gonna do is what we did last time. We're just gonna go up here, search for hand, and there's the hand tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to Shift H. And we'll do the same thing here. And we'll do the same thing here. Remember the hand tool? It's the same tool. It's just the hand tool in the viewer window, the hand tool in the composite shot timeline, and the hand tool in the editor sequence timeline. It's the same tool, just in different windows. So now that we've fixed that, we're gonna go back to the slice command and we're gonna change it to H and it should take it. And that's all we have to worry about for the common timeline. So we're gonna go ahead and collapse this. 
And now we're in the editor sequence timeline. So we're going to change the slip edit tool to B and we're going to change the ripple edit tool to Y. The roll edit tool we're going to change from E to Q and we're going to change ripple delete to X. Make composite shot we're going to change to control shift C And that's all we have to worry about for the editor sequence timeline. Now we're under composite shot timeline. And this one we're going to change make composite shot. We're going to change that one also to control shift C. And that's all we have to do under composite shot timeline. Now we're in the trimmer and we're almost done with our keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to change set endpoint to D, change set out point to F, previous frame will be 1, next frame will be 2, shuttle left will be W, shuttle right will be R, and shuttle stop will be E. Insert media on the current timeline, we'll change that to C. And that's all we have to worry about under Trimmer. You'll be happy to know there's nothing to change under Viewer. So that is all of our keyboard shortcut settings. We've changed everything. We're just going to click OK to apply. And now we are ready to begin editing. So there you have it. Those are my custom keyboard shortcuts for HitFilm. Hopefully they work as well for you as they have for me over the years. But if they're not working for you, that's perfectly fine. Feel free to go in and customize them to whatever you would like them to be. And if you don't mind, share what you've come up with. I'm always interested in learning more and seeing what other people are doing to make them more successful.